Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this video, we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of the brand new Rivian R1T pickup truck. They have claimed a drag coefficient of just 0.3, which is much lower than the industry standard of 0.45, 0.50 for a Dodge Ram or a Ford F-150 and so on. To do this analysis, we're going to use a very accurate 3D scan that we got from A2 Mac 1. They specialize in scanning, reverse engineering and benchmarking cars from all around the industry and then providing the results to their customers. Just to show you how detailed this scan is, just have a look at these tires. You can even read the marks on the tire walls. So this is really, really impressive stuff and a fantastic reference to carry out a aerodynamic benchmarking study. So to get started, we're actually going to first set up the project. So I uploaded the model to Airshaper. Um, this is a huge file. It's a two gigabyte STL file, more or less, which is not actually, it's actually way too big to display this in your browser. So we compress it just for viewing purposes. And also we can work directly with these scans because we can work with non-watertight and non-manifold 3D models. So you don't need to spend weeks to close gaps and holes and so on. So once the model is uploaded and converted, you can just rotate it easily in your browser. You don't need expensive hardware or software. Um, you can select whether it's on the ground or above the ground. Let's keep the car on the ground in this case. Static or moving means you add a moving floor. In this case, we use 30 meters per second as our reference velocity. And we don't need a rotation because the coordinate system matches ours. The model is in millimeters and to add rotating wheels, we just click the button, add rotating wheels. And then we can actually click the tires after which our software will automatically detect the center of rotation and it will link the rotational velocity. So the RPM of the tires to the forward driving speed of the car. So that's it. That's the only thing we need to do to set up a simulation at Airshaper. Uh, it looks like they're spinning backwards, but this is actually <laughs> the typical optical illusion. So if you set the right speed, it matches. So if we set it back to 30 meters per second and we hit the next button, that's all we need to do to start a simulation. Once the simulation is done, we can actually start to analyze the results. So if you look at this page, now we have a number of ways to analyze the flow and the one we're going to be using mainly throughout this video is what we call 3D pressure clouds. This is a 3D representation of where you're actually dragging air along, creating energy loss and thus increasing the drag coefficient. So to go over all of the details of this car, first of all, from a distance, you can quickly see that this is a very clean design, uh, meaning that you don't have many edges, uh, external geometry parts that are sticking out to, to disturb the flow and so on. Just like on a Tesla, um, the door handles have been made flush uh, to the car. You don't see many um, geometries uh, or, or, or creases in, in the surface and so on. It's all very clean, especially when you look at the underfloor of the car. So you can see that this has all been shielded with, with what we would call aero panels. Um, so instead of seeing exposed drivetrain components like on an ICE um, combustion engine car, it is all nicely covered so the air can flow nicely and smoothly underneath the car uh, without too many obstructions. This is really, really nice and helps to lower the drag. Uh, this is often overlooked on vehicle design. The, um, people obviously look at the top and, and the side of the car, but the underfloor is actually extremely important, just like we saw on the Porsche Taycan, for example. So we have clean shapes, door handles. Um, maybe one small error um, that we thought, first of all, was the result of a, a simulation, which is not being symmetric. Uh, it has to be fairly symmetric, but this is actually only present on one side, and we were wondering why this is. And on closer inspection, we actually saw that the Rivian had a small gap or like a panel gap or a misalignment between the A-pillar and the rest of the structure on the car. And we went to check the 3D scan, which had the same feature. And then we went to check photographs uh, that were taken by ATMAC1 before taking the car apart. And it actually has this panel gap um, uh, error. So this may be a small bit of feedback uh, or a comment on, on, on the Rivian design. Maybe this will improve uh, in future versions, but we could actually spot this by means of aerodynamic simulations, because this actually trips the flow and creates a vortex and, and creates drag. And we didn't see it on the other side. So we actually were able to spot <laughs> this misalignment in metal caps through an aerodynamic analysis. Other than that, the car is very smooth. Other things that we can observe or tricks that they pulled to lower the drag coefficient is that they have front air deflectors here. 
these actually help to shield the tires so the air is being pushed away and also being pushed around the tires and actually being pushed across the gap or the wheel well here so you don't have too much air diving underneath and, and hitting the, the, the walls of the wheel well uh, reducing the drag uh, by shielding those they also have those at the rear wheels even though they're a bit smaller they're still present and here they also help to uh, actually shield the wheel because the wheels are really uh, like a mixer uh, creating turbulent air Another thing we can th we can see is that um, the car has what we call air deflect uh, air curtains, which is this small gap here um, between um, the outer side of the front bumper and the inner side. Let's say this is a narrow channel, and usually it converges. It helps to speed up the air, and then it gets ejected here at the rear side. Um, where you can see this small slot here um, on the side of the vehicle, it gets ejected and this helps to create kind of a curtain around the wheel to further shield it so that the wheel itself doesn't create too much turbulence. So if you look at the pressure clouds, you can actually see the effect here of this shielding. Um, and behind the front wheels, uh, we see this ventilation gap. Um, so this is really useful. Sometimes they call it a breather uh, to evacuate some of the high pressure slash turbulent air from the front wheel well. And this gets channeled um, all the way via this nice channel in the door panel. Um, and we believe it's actually there for aerodynamic purposes and of course design purposes to help guide the air all the way to the end where it again probably jumps around the tire to maybe kind of create a, a similar air curtain effect to a lower extent, obviously. But guiding this air, starting from the breather all the way to the back of the car, is probably helping aerodynamics as well. So we got the air curtains, we got the smooth underfloor. Um, the nice thing that we see at the end of the underfloor is that um, they even um, covered the trailer hitch. Uh, which is really nice to see. They covered this so it doesn't cause extra turbulence. And what we also see this, is that you have this small edge here. Um, and likely this is there to not really trip the flow, but energize the flow, um, energize the boundary layer so that it has more momentum and sticks to the diffuser uh, properly instead of letting go um, too early. So this probably postpones the separation location and moves it further downstream on the car. Um, other things that we can see is that if you look at the side view of the car, um, a big problem, of course, with pickup trucks is this uh, drastic drop uh, in height. So there, there's no way that the flow can actually follow this curvature and close the wake. It needs to kind of fall off. It, it has too much horizontal momentum to suddenly go in a vertical direction. Um, but still, Rivian really managed to control this flow really well. They added, first of all, a spoiler um, at, at the edge or the trailing edge of the cabin, and this helps to guide the air downward. And within this spoiler, uh, this is something we've also seen on other cars, on hatchbacks and so on, they actually have these slots, which really help to further inject fresh air into the wake, as you can see here. So the red clouds are more or less the wake, and they are being cut out here uh, by fresh air actually being guided downward underneath the spoiler, so in between the spoiler and the cabin. So that's really nice to help the air shoot downward and close the wake, um, and probably it makes the air hit the, the, the closed cover, by the way, of the pickup truck, of the cargo bed, uh, before it reaches the end um, of the truck, virtually giving it more or less a curve like this, uh, which is kind of like a drop shape, if you will, with a bit of imagination. The cool thing is that they also did this in the top view. So on the C pillars, um, they have this edge here. They have this bit of geometry, which really helps to create this edge that you sometimes also see on hatchbacks um, or on, on, on big SUVs to help either trip the flow or end or guide the flow inward. So you can see that uh, this geometry at the end of the cabin is already curving inward and then this injects air into the wake and kind of creates a drop shape also in the top view. So if you look at the, the total cloud, you see that it contracts in the top view and it contracts in the side view, um, making it much more narrow than you would see on a normal pickup truck. So that's really interesting to see uh, that they actually accelerate air into the wake and reduce uh, drag that way. Overall, this is a very, very clean design, and we were actually able to verify the claimed 0.3 drag coefficient. We have 0.322. Um, it's a bit higher, and there's a number of reasons for this. First of all, manufacturers are usually quite optimistic when it comes to claiming drag coefficients. Um, this is because, first of all, they are able to 
play with the kind of wheels, the covers that they mount, like an aerodynamic cover they would mount during a test uh, in the wind tunnel. Um, so if you get different rims, you will get a different drag coefficient uh, in reality, for example. Um, they can play with the uh, ride height of the car, um, which is actually uh, a final remark on this analysis. We analyzed this car with the ride height in the default position. Now, Rivian did add a functionality that is um, lowering the car when you're going at cruising speeds at the highway, for example. So the car will lower itself, lowering the ride height, and this will actually further reduce the drag coefficient of the car, bringing it even closer to the claimed 0.3 drag coefficient. So overall, we are super impressed with the design of the Rivian R1T. So that was it for this video on the aerodynamics of the Rivian R1T. If you have questions, just contact us or drop an email or a comment in, 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 the, in the comment section below this video. Thanks a lot for watching. And before we go, a massive thank you again to Atomac One for providing us with this fantastic, super detailed 3D scan of the Rivian. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.